For unit five, we're going to get into solid geometry. So this first lesson, lesson one, is about solids of rotation or spinning. So we're going to take a look at some two-dimensional or flat shapes um, to make three-dimensional shapes. So on this first one, it's on page 202 in your workbook. Determine which one you feel doesn't belong and justify why you believe it doesn't belong. So maybe you chose A because it's the only one that bends. Uh, maybe the only one that's made of, that looks to be made of metal. B, it appears to be the only one that has like a solid uniform shape um, versus kind of different chunks put together. Part C, um, maybe it's the only one that seems to be kind of triangular um, or not a toy. Part D, um, maybe you said it's the only one that has that many colors on it, the only one with kind of sharp corners, the only one that when you rotate it, it kind of looks the same on every side. So if we were to, to you know, look at this one just from this side, it maybe looks different, um, the top. So those are just a couple of reasons. You could have had other justifications for why you chose which one you felt didn't belong. So um, go ahead and write these definitions down on the back of your purple sheet for chapter five. Um, so these are just some definitions that we're going to be using. So we're going to be looking at what an axis of rotation is. So an axis of rotation is a line about or a line that a two-dimensional figure is rotated around to produce a three-dimensional figure. Okay, so if we were talking about, you know, an axis of rotation, we could kind of stick a, have a line through here that would come out the bottom, and then this cube could spin around it, okay? Or maybe you could put one through this and stick it out, kind of like a rolling pin if you're baking, um, but roll that, that line that it's spinning around, Okay, or here it almost appears like there is one in this one. That's called an axis of rotation. Then the solid of rotation is the actual three-dimensional figure um, created. So here we see this axis of rotation is this dotted line. We've got this little triangle attached to it. That is the solid of rotation. So if I kind of redrew this so you could see. So that's the axis of rotation. Then there's this triangle that's stuck to it, okay? And it's being spun around. So then that solid formed by spinning it around that three-dimensional shape is the solid of rotation. These are also in the back of your student workbook. All right, so then let's take a look um, at exploring some different um, solids of rotation. So go ahead, and if you're doing this in class, you need to get a set of six shapes, and then they, they're they already taped to um, some sticks, so just grab a set. So you'll see these six shapes, and they're already taped onto a wooden dowel that you're gonna use for this activity. So take your shape, okay, so choose within um, your partners, choose one to two shapes each and spin them. So you can kind of see on this how there's the axis of rotation and the shape, just spin it around and then trace what solid is being created when you're spinning it. So trace the three-dimensional version of your solid and then try to predict what these other shapes are going to make. And you can look at your other group members' um, drawings, or you can spin their shape to help you if you're getting stuck. So after you've tried that, then come back. So here would be um, what the rectangle would do. So when you spin it, okay, and then if we spin it faster and faster, then you'd end up with a cylinder if we were to keep rotating this um, rectangle here. Okay, so then drawing that three-dimensional um, cylinder here. So we can take a look at what a couple other ones would look like, a triangle. So this triangle one here, if you could think of continuing this on, okay, looks like it's going to create a cone. 
or this um, kind of trapezoid here is creating what's called a truncated cone or a cone that kind of has the top cut off. Okay, so it's not a full triangle, like this top one here was a triangle. Okay, this one isn't a full triangle, it's more like a trapezoid because the top part got cut off. That was a terrible drawing. All right, let's try again. Okay, so then this top chunk got cut off. So then you end up with a truncated cone. Or we looked at the rectangle. Um, you could also have a circle. Okay, so if we had the whole um, circle on the stick, so if we had that stick and then we had the whole circle on it, you could create a sphere. You also have the example that you only have half of the circle. Okay, so you don't have the full circle and it is still creating the sphere. So you don't have this part. And spinning, that will also create the sphere. So let's take a look at some drawings of those six shapes. So here's kind of what happened in each of those cases. And the 3D representation as you spun those. So maybe you had a hard time drawing these. So let's take a look at practicing drawing a few three-dimensional shapes. So if you're gonna draw a cylinder, then what I would do is kind of start with a circle or like an oval really, okay? So start with an oval and then you wanna um, draw straight lines down from the sides of the, of the oval, okay? Creating the height of your cylinder and then do a curved, whoops, do a curved line at the bottom, okay, to finish off that circle. And then you can do a dotted line for the back to show that that's behind it. For a sphere, you can draw a circle. And then I would draw kind of like a dotted line around the middle and around the back to show that it's three-dimensional versus just a circle. A cone, um, I would start with kind of the legs almost of a triangle. Then you can do the curved portion at the bottom for the base, and then that dotted line to show going behind the cone. And then if you wanted, you could color in the base of each shape, because the bases will be a big deal. So the base of this cylinder is the circle, the base of the cone is a circle. Okay, a sphere doesn't have a base. So let's practice drawing these um, when we're looking at these axes of rotation here. So if you're trying to draw this three-dimensional shape, but draw the 2D shape that when spun around the axis will create this vase. So you kind of want to think of cutting the vase in half and then um, drawing just the one side of it or one portion of it. So if we're looking at this as the axis of rotation, so then you're looking at what would rotate around to give me that shape. So then you can kind of see this outline happening. And so that's what you're wanting to draw, okay, as your picture that will create that drawing if you spun it around the axis of rotation. So on page 204, you'll see three others to practice drawing. So try that on page 204 and then come back. So here's some examples of drawings that you could have come up with. Okay, again, taking a look at um, where that axis of rotation or the middle kind of is happening of the drawing and then drawing the shape accordingly, half of it. Okay, then here, that's kind of the middle of the drawing that's kind of, the axis of rotation is kind of like a line of symmetry, okay? So it's cutting that shape in half so that we can kind of rotate around it. This one, okay, your axis of rotation is going into that hole, right? So you've got a hole in there, which is kind of where this um, donut or bagel shape is happening. So it can't touch the axis of rotation because you need that 
hole in there. Whoops. Okay, let's get a marker. Okay, so you need that hole. Okay, so the axis of rotation is going through that hole. So this kind of circle portion is off the axis of rotation. Okay, so you've got this circle and you can kind of think of it rotating around here, creating that um, almost like a tunnel. Like if you cut it, you'd have like a tunnel going through there. So discuss with your partner, which ones did you think were the easiest to draw? Which were the most difficult? What would be the difference between rotating the two-dimensional figure that's outlined that outlined the whole figure versus just half the figure? So when we talked about here where we could do um, the entire circle, okay, to create a sphere versus what's the difference if we only have half of it? Okay, so if we have a whole circle taped versus half of a circle, what would be different? And then is there any two-dimensional figures that we could spin to create a rectangular prism? So rectangular prism um, means a rectang rectangular top, front, side, back, everything's a rectangle. So discuss that and then come back. So this first one, up to you, what's easiest, what's hardest, that'll change um, depending on who you are. Um, what would be the difference between rotating half the shape like we've drawn here versus drawing the whole shape? So if you only, if you drew the whole thing, you really only need to, to rotate this 180 degrees. Okay, if you rotate 180 degrees, it'll give you this full three-dimensional shape. Okay, because both sides would go and you would get the whole thing. So if you had only half of it, then you're going to have to do the 360 degree rotation to get all the way back around. So if you have the whole shape 360, half of it, or the half of the shape 360, if you have the whole shape, you only have to rotate half a rotation or 180. And then there's no way to get a rectangular prism because you're spinning, you're rotating, those that rotating is creating the circle. Okay, so it's creating a curved design. So when we put a rectangle on our axis of rotation, remember that rotated around, okay, and gave us a cylinder. No way to get a rectangular prism. All right, um, then let's just review some of the things that we looked at in today's lesson. So what's the difference between rotating in two dimensions um, and rotating in three dimensions? Where do you see solids of rotation in the world? And um, then let's take a look at these sketches to see if we can rotate, um, sketch and describe the different solids created down here. So pause, talk about that, and then come back. So when we did two-dimensional rotations, when we were doing reflection, rotation, translation, that just rotates around a specific point, okay? So you're rotating around a specific point on a two-dimensional surface. So you're just, re you're just moving that two-dimensional shape versus three dimensions is rotating out around in space and it's creating a solid, okay? So it's creating a whole solid versus just moving the shape on the piece of paper. Um, then where do you see solids of rotation in the real world? So maybe like the axle of a car, because that's rotating your tires, the earth spinning, okay, spins on an axis of rotation, pottery on a pottery wheel, okay, um, or like a basketball as you're shooting a basket, your the ball would be spinning on an axis of rotation as it's released from your hand. A baseball, okay, similar thing. Sketch and describe. So if we look at these um, shapes down here, so this so this dark black line is the axis of rotation. So if we rotate this one around, it's going to be a solid cylinder. Okay, so it's going to rotate around top and bottom here and create that cylinder. The second one is off the axis of rotation. So this one is going to still rotate around, but it's going to have a, a hollow middle. Okay, so it's going to be 
a cylinder, but it's going to have a, have space in the middle or an empty spot in the middle. Um, then the axis of rotation here is horizontal. So this one's going to be rotating around this way. Again, it's off the axis of rotation. So it's going to have a hole in the middle. Okay. So similar to this one, just um, up and down now instead of left and right because of the axis of rotation being horizontal, but has that hole through the middle. All right, so lesson summary here. Um, so take a coin and spin it. So if, we if you thought of this as like a penny, you could spin it around. You can see that you're going to get a sphere. And um, if you take a triangular flag around, um, around a pole, okay, that's going to create a cone. Okay, so that because that bottom is going to create a circle as it rotates around. So you're going to be getting a cone when you rotate a triangle around an axis of rotation. So remember that the axis of rotation is that actual pole that, it, that the shape is being spun around. The solid of rotation is the actual shape being created. Okay, so here's the axis of rotation. As we spin this around, it will create this three-dimensional shape called the solid of rotation.